this lesson, we are going to make a new Autotask user and a new API user. So let's get started. To make a new resource, we have to go to the admin center. So we, go, we can go to the hamburger menu in the top left corner. And we can go to admin and resources users right here under commonly used. When we click on it, we will go to the resources page directly. So that's really easy or that's quite handy. Okay, so if you want to make a new resource, what you can do is you can click on new. If it's just a normal user, if you want to make an API user, you, you can go to this icon right here and choose API user. So let's just first make a new resource. So to make a new resource, you can go to this, you, you can click on the, the button we just saw and we, you will get this new screen. So in the screen, what you have to do, you have to fill in the name. So let's say it's test user for right now. Okay. And we will have to fill in an email address. So let's say it's just test user at uh, different.nl. Okay, and you can fill in the title. So maybe this user is an uh, engineer. We can fill that in right here. You have to choose which location. We only have headquarters, so that's really easy for us. But you might want to choose a different location. And you can also fill in a phone number if they have it. Uh, either mobile phone or office phone or home phone. And just make sure you fill in as much information as possible. After we did this, we can go to the next step, which is security. And in the security tab, as you can see, we can fill in a username. It will choose automatically the initial of the first name plus the last name as username, but you can change it to anything you want. So we might want to use the full name and we can just fill it in right now. We can select if the user should be active and um, you can disable or enable some, some things. What you also have to do is you have to choose a security level on this page. So as you can see, here are the security levels we filled in earlier. So what we want to do is we want to just use our uh, uh, own security level for the service, service desk. And we can choose here which we want to uh, want to allow or not allow. If they're not required to submit timesheets, we can uh, check this box right here. And we can either uh, say if they're allowed to edit their skills or send bulk emails. You just have to um, fill it in as applicable to this resource you're making right now. And you can uh, uh, check this box right here if you want to enable to factor authentication for this resource so just to be safe it's it's better to just enable to factor to factor authentication or if you want to re, want to be really safe you can just install or uh, uh, set set it to single sign-on from something like office 365 or something like that okay so after we filled in everything for security we can go to the next step which is hr in the HR type, you can fill in what kind of type of resource this is. So if it's a contractor or an employee. So for now, it's just an empl employee and the payroll type is salary. So we can fill in the hire date. So let's say um, the resource will start at the first of next month. And we can set when their timesheets should start. So let's say this resource has won't be working in the in the first week because or won't be working alone in the first week because uh, they're they're just getting started we might want to start our timesheet on the seventh of the month we can fill in here a uh, payroll identifier and stuff like that and um, underneath we can fill in the daily availability so right now it's set on eight hours a day from Monday through Friday, but this resource will work part-time. So let's say they, they will just only make uh, or only work four hours on a Friday. We can just fill it in right here and it'll, um, uh, uh, it'll change the total here automatically. 
and we can set a weekly billable hours goal. So um, uh, our goal, we might want to say in, instead of 36 or, or instead of zero hours, we might want to say, okay, just set it to 31. So they will have one hour uh, each day where they don't have to be billable or we might want to set it to let's say 27 or something like that um, you can you can just fill it in right here so let's say 25 for this user um, and we can s set a time off policy so for this user it's, it'll be automatically set to time off policy of, of our company because we set it uh, we set it like that in the time off policy when we configure it but if this this user doesn't need to use the time off policy we have for all our users we can either make a new one right here or we can select none but time off policy different is uh, is fine for this user so se let's say set the effective date at the 1st of june and we can also uh, fill in additional time right here or we can set time off right here and we can set an internal cost burden rate which is uh, uh, which is required all resources must have at least one rate so let's say the hourly rate for this user will be 25 we can just click on ok right here and it'll it'll be set and after we've set this we can go to the next step which is approvers and approvers um, are for both timesheets and expense reports so for timesheet approvers, we might want to select um, their manager or their team leader. And we can select which approval level they should have. So first is fine for this, uh, this timesheet approver. And we also have to set an expense report approver. So instead of, the instead of the team leader, you might want to set a manager or something like that. And just click on OK. And um, finally what we have to do is we have to uh, uh, set the association so we might want to associate this user with a line of business right now um, we're going to associate them with I it services and with managed services and what this does is they can view items um, or we can we also check this box so they can view items with no assigned line of business but we've assigned two, so they can they can just uh, uh, they can also see those. And we have to select a department. So right now, when we click this plus button right here, we can select a department. So for this user, it'll be service delivery. And we can select a role. So for this user, it'll be engineer. And we can either set if it should be the default role and department, which will be set automatically if they only have one department. And we can set if they are the department lead. So um, they're not a lead, so we, we can just hit OK right here and it'll be saved. And we can also set which service test queues should be visible to this resource by clicking on this new sign right here. And um, uh, we can just select different queues. So, this resource might want to see the client portal. We can click on OK, but they also can see, or they also are required to see level one support. So we can also select that one. And for this user, because it's an engineer, we might want to also um, let them see monitoring alerts. So these are the queues that are, that are visible to this resource. So now, uh, as you can see, there are red marks or red stars right at the top of all these tabs. So that are the uh, tabs with required fields. And the last two tabs are, aren't are required, but uh, for resources, it's best if you just fill in as much as possible. So we can fill it if they have certain skills and what their skill level is, and um, if they have cer certificates and training and when they're busy with, with stuff like that and what kind of de degrees they have. So as you can see, we can just click on new right here and fill in different kind of things. So um, so I'm not I'm not going to do that right now because I be, because to do that you have to save this resource. But um, just just go to new here and select everything you want to fill in. It'll be really easy to just add uh, add uh, that stuff. 
And um, in the last tab, you have attachments. So for attachments, it's really easy. You can just click here on add attachments and it'll open a new tab. And um, uh, for this tab, as you can see right here, you can just choose choose a file you can give it a name and you can uh, say what kind of attachment it should be so if it should be a, a link a url or if it should be just an attachment after you've edited it you can just click on save and close and it'll it'll be visible underneath here in uh in this screen right here so that's how you how you can make a user uh, if you want to create a whole new kind of user um, I'm not going to save it right now, but you, you can just click on save and close. But an easier way is to just go to the hamburger menu right here and click on copy. When you click on copy, it'll automatically fill in a lot of this stuff for you. So what you might want to do is you might want to find the role or the, um, uh, or the title uh, the new user resource will get. So for, let's say if we get a new service task engineer or a new um, uh, new project engineer, we might want to just copy a existing or a current uh, account of a project engineer or of a service task engineer. It just minimizes mistakes like um, forgetting to fill out stuff or giving too much um, uh, rights in service task queues and stuff like that. So it's it's better to just copy stuff like that and if you want to edit a resource what you can do is you can just go to the hamburger menu in front of uh, a resource and you can just click on edit or you can uh, click on inactivate if you want to make a user inactive if you want to uh, do stuff in bulk what you can do is you can just click on this this right here this checkbox and you can go to this icon right here and just um, enable two-factor authentication or inactivate resources stuff like that in bulk so uh, yeah you can you can use that um, to import you can just click on this button right here and you can import uh, a few users but it's um, like i said it's not too much work so you can just make new users or copy users and uh, make them that way um, right now inactive aren't shown but you can check this box right here to show inactive users and what you can also do is you can choose which columns you want to be visible so right now we have almost everything visible except for two factor if it's required so what we can do is you can just double click it here and to make it uh, required or to make it visible and we can click on save and close and as you can see two factor required will become visible right here um, if you want to find a certain resource, you can do it by clicking this button right here. But you can also just type in like names of uh, of resources and hit enter, and it'll it'll search for you. Um, and you can you can also do that with stuff like departments or stuff like uh, stuff like security levels or email and stuff like that. So it's really easy to just filter. Um, uh, through your resources and just filter stuff like that. Okay, um, another kind of user instead of just a resource for your company, what you can do is you can make API users. API users are used for um, um, uh, stuff like making an API connection with other software tools, like for example, IT Glue or Brightcache or stuff like that. What you can do is, as you've seen in the screen, um, uh, here I, I will just go to this icon right here and select new API user and it will open a new new tab and I can fill in the, the name right here so I can make it um, API right gauge for example I can give it an email so I can make an email API right gauge at different.nl and for API users, you only have two kind of, uh, you only have special kind of security levels. So you have the system uh, API uh, security level and the can't read cost API security level. So for this one, I'm just going to use the basic or default system. But as you 
uh, as you saw before with the security levels you can also make your own ones if you if you really want to you have to select which location this user is um, assigned to so for us it's just headquarters and uh, for api users they're a bit different as normal resources we can just generate a key right here and we can generate a secret right here and we can use this key and this secret within brightcage for example to uh, make the api um, live or to to just make the api uh, uh, connection um so uh for to use the api for the um, version 1.6 and later you should use a tracking identifier so once a tracking identifier is assigned it cannot be changed so if if it's assigned and you want to change it you just have to create a new api user so the tracking identifier, it's this box right here. Um, what you have to do is you can select an integration vendor because a lot of vendors already have uh, integrations uh, within Autotask. So you, as you can see, it's a whole list right here. You can just select the right um, uh, integration vendor. So for this one, I will use Brightcage. And I can also select if I want to associate it with a line or line of business. Right now, I don't want to, um, but but this checkbox is also here, so it can view items with no ass assigned line of business. You can just change it in the security level if you want to, but for uh, Brightcase, for example, it isn't necessary for us. So what you want to do is you want to hit save and close, and you want to use this this key and this password secret in Brightcase to just make the API connection. So um, yeah, for now I'm not going to save and close it. I will just cancel it. But as you can see, there there are two different users. Um, uh, but but yeah, it's it's really easy to just make a new resource or a new API user. Um, you have to play with it for a little bit. But, uh, but as I've said, it's not, not that difficult. So you can just make some template users or keep, choose to keep a few users, which, which are pretty standard and you can just copy those.